Here we go. Oh god. Oh my god. That is gross. There are a couple of things that I have to come clean with you about. The first one is that I've neglected my canister filter again. And the second thing is that I don't think that I've been very fair when it comes to canister filters and hang on the back filters and other powered filters when it comes to this channel. So I thought I would talk a little bit about that as well. And we're going to be cleaning a canister filter that I haven't opened in probably over a year. Hey fish friends, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. My name is Zenzo from Tozawa Tanks. Now, if you've been following my channel for a while, it's, it's no secret that I love air-driven filters. Um, an air-driven filter is just that. It's a filter filtration in your aquarium that is powered by air. And there are a couple of reasons why I really enjoy them. One is that they're really inexpensive, both the ability to power and, and filter multiple aquariums, the sponge filters or box filters or whatever it is that you're gonna be using to run the filtration. And then for scale reasons, for a room like this, if you have 20, 30, 40 aquariums, you can have one air pump that's plugged into an outlet that can power all of your filters and you don't have a bunch of cords being plugged into you know, the wall. So from a scale perspective, from a from an economical financial perspective, an air-driven filter really makes sense in most applications. Now, with that being said, I think that there are a few good reasons why you might want to use a powered filter, like a hang on the back filter and a canister filter, an internal filter, things like that. Now, I do have some filters that have a motor in them. I've got a, a, a FX4 on my African cichlid tank behind me, which we're going to be opening up today. I've got a hang on the back filter on my planet aquarium that's kind of doing polishing. I have a canister filter in my Indian mud scupper set up because of the waterfall. So I do use power filters. And upstairs even I have one tank that's being powered by a sump. So I do have, you know, situations where I do use a powered filter. And I think that, you know, in some cases they do make sense. If you don't have 25, 30 aquariums, you only have one or two aquariums and you know, having something plugged into the wall is not that big of an issue, then I think that's a good reason to not have to only go with air-driven filters. Um, and, you know, they do, in the, some cases, offer better polishing, better, you know, water movement, things like that. So, in in the case with my African cichlid tank behind me, this 90-gallon peacock tank, um, there's a ton of water movement that's um, provided by the uh, canister filter. There's a lot of, obviously, mechanical filtration happening in there, biological filtration so they do have their benefits now why do i not like them <sighs> okay well yes so there is the whole thing about plugging them into a wall so for me with so many tanks it just doesn't make sense to i don't think i could even do it i'd, I'd have to you know hire an electrician to come in here and uh you know beef up my electrical system to be able to have a bunch of filters plugged into all the outlets down here. And if I even if I, you know, at that point I'd probably run heaters. So there's that aspect. But also I think, you know, from a simplicity standpoint, I like air driven filters because it's very easy to maintain. I have a sponge filter in an aquarium that's maybe hiding behind a rock or a decoration or something or a plant. I can very easily take that sponge filter out, rinse it out in the sink, clean it, put it back in, and it takes all of five minutes or so and it's done and I don't need to touch it again for sometimes two, three, four, five months, where with a canister filter, I've got to, you know, turn it off and, uh, you know, make sure that the valves are closed and remove it from wherever I have it and open it up and clean it and it's a big process. And that's why I'm a little bit lazy and uh, I kind of wait until the last minute to take care of it. And I'm not saying this is the right thing to do. This is obviously a fault of mine, but in this tank, I haven't opened this canister filter in a long time because I haven't really seen a need. I've got um, other filtration in there. I was running sponge filters. Now I'm running the, the Zis uh, bubble bio moving bed filter. The flow's still good, but there's some particulates that are kind of floating around in the water. So to me, it indicates that the canister filter is probably full of gunk. Now it is gonna be a messy job. So I am wearing actually a uh, nice drippy uh, t-shirt from Into the AM. You can see it's like a, blue and white paint kind of dripping into this cool astronaut there floating in space. So um, I don't want to get this thing all covered in fish poop and stuff like that. So I'm going to change into a better shirt for cleaning. And, uh, and you know, while I'm doing that, let's thank the sponsor of this video, 
Into the AM. Into the AM is a team of artists and creators that formed an apparel company to share a common vision of developing premium apparel that elevates self-expression while focusing on comfort by using the highest quality materials and eco-friendly inks. Into the AM has dozens of cool designs to choose from, covering many categories including t-shirts and tank tops, hoodies and jackets, hats, and even joggers and shorts. Use the link and discount code below to shop at Into the AM and find your clothing piece to express what drives you. All right, I am in better canister filter cleaning attire. I've actually got on a tank top. It's into the AM tank top, but it's not like a cool graphic tee. It's just one of their comfortable tank tops. So uh, thank you to into the AM for being a sponsor, but this is also gonna allow me to get my elbows and stuff dirty and not worry so much about messing up my nice shirt. Let's see what's inside that canister filter. I'm sure it's gonna be gross, but uh, yep, so here we go. Okay, so the first thing that I need to do is uh, basically my canister filter is behind the cabinet here. Well, it's not really a cabinet, but it's my stand, which I've just put like nice covers on, plywood. So now I'm gonna go ahead and go in there, turn off the power to the, to the canister filter, close the valves and pull this thing out. And uh, hopefully it doesn't take too long. I should kind of time this thing and see how long it takes. Just so that in the future, when I go back and watch this video and I feel like I'm being lazy, I can say, oh, it only takes 20 minutes to do it. So I'll go ahead and start the timer and uh, we'll do that now. Okay, well, I've got the cover off and uh, there was like spider cobwebs, spider webs down here. So obviously it's been a long time since I've been in here since there's cobwebs down there. So now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I just unplugged it and we're going to pull it out and open it up. Just without even opening it, just by looking in the little inlet and outlet uh, ports, I can see that this is really bad. It's gonna be pretty gross. So fortunately for me, I have a sink uh, here in the fish room. Um, so if you're doing this at home, I'm guessing you're doing it outside on your patio, you know, maybe in your garage sink, uh, hopefully not in anywhere nice because uh, stuff does get everywhere. I almost feel like I need like a big like dishwasher apron or something to clean this. Here we go. Oh God. Oh my God. <laughs> All right, I've got to get a camera or my cell phone or something to show you how terrible this is. All right, this is really, really bad. Look at that. That is gross. You see that? Oh my God. Look at this. Look at that. Oh, that's awful. All right, so I feel like to do this justice, I need to show you some up close video of um, what's going on. So I've got my phone here because I can do it handheld with one hand, but oh my God, like I knew it was gonna be bad. I knew I was neglecting this. I knew that I let it go too long, but this is a lot of crap. Like I can just pick up the mold it's not even whatever you want to call it. Look at that. Oh my God. I know you guys are going to roast me in the, in the comments, but you know what? This is honesty, right? This is full transparency. And like I said before, I don't like to hide things and make it sound like I'm the perfect fish keeper. Obviously I'm not. And also, you know, for someone like me where my job is basically talking about aquariums and fish, and you know, it's it's my nine to five, as well as my weekends. You know, this is me letting it get like this. And I imagine, you know, people in their regular lives get busy and you start doing like, taking your kids to school and soccer practice and piano recital and ballet and going out to dinner and being with friends. And you might let, you know, yours get neglected for a few months too, but look at this. Oh my God, that is so bad, so. All right, I need two hands to, to, oh my God, I don't even know what to say. Okay, turning off the phone and gonna keep cleaning. Okay, with the magic of time, this is all clean now. So um, 
I ended up just using my hose under pressure to clean out all the gunk in here. Now, for those of you that are worried about like killing beneficial bacteria that's in the filter if you use dechlorinated water, I actually did, and you can see in the bucket there, it's full of grime. I actually did clean like the, the rings or whatever in that bucket. So they did get uh, tank water that I just pulled out of the uh, cichlid tank. Um, but actually, uh, I think that people don't need to worry as much about that as we've thought in the past. Um, Prime Type Aquatics actually made a video, and he's a biologist, he's a biology, biology professor, um, talking about uh, beneficial bacteria and the time that it takes to kill them under chlorine and et cetera, et cetera. So um, I don't think there's a huge concern there. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and fill this up, dechlorinate the water in this uh, filter and hook it back up. Okay, so we're back, it's all done. The canister filter is hooked up. It's gone through its kind of burping process where it turns on and turns off. So now it's running. Um, if you can see it behind me, it looks super cloudy. That's because whatever was in the tubes, um, you know, between the tank and the filter, that still had gunk in it. So that's gonna, you know, take some time to cycle through. So I'll come back later and get some shots of what it looks like all clean and, uh, you know, free of all the debris floating around. As far as how long it took me, it took me 49 minutes. So it's kind of a long time. Now let's say, yes, I was moving cameras around. And so I probably wasted about 10 minutes worth of time, like showing you what I was doing. But uh, besides that, you know, so let's say we take that out. Let's, it's about 40 minutes for me to take out the canister filter, clean it, clean, you know, refill it, put it back together, put it back on. So, you know, I guess it's not so bad. Um, definitely we learned something. We learned that you should not be negligent. You should not wait till it's too late to clean your filter. So don't do as I did. Don't even do as I say, just do it more often. So how often should you clean a canister filter? I don't know, three, four, five, six months, not 14 months or like I've done or whatever. So anyway, that is a lesson. Let's make this fun. Let's do something different. So in a future video, let's say in October, comment in that video if you're still hanging out, clean your canister filter. And uh, that way it'll remind me it's about six months away. Clean your canister filter, I'll do it. And because you guys are reminding me, we'll do something fun. So for those of you that remind me, then I'll just kind of keep note of how many people reminded me and I'll pick a winner and I'll do some kind of fun giveaway for you guys that remind me six months from now, clean your filter, dude. Okay, so um, anyway, thank you to Into the AM for providing me with a canister cleaning shirt. I, it, it was stuff splattering all over. It didn't get on my face or anything, but it was on my arms and it was, it's yuck. So um, thank you to them. Check out the link below to uh, thank them as well and get some cool merch for yourself. And um, yeah, so let me know if you like this video. A little bit different again, fun, yucky, different. But uh, do me a favor if you made it this far, like the video, subscribe if you have not done so already, hit that notification bell and watch this video up here that also talks about me cleaning a canister filter. That's all I have for now, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.